right, one o'clock. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. It's quite a turnout. Um, I must say it's not often I talk, get to talk to so many people and it's quite uh, exciting and daunting at the same time. I uh, keep my fingers crossed that the internet gods will be kind to us today. And um, let's kick off. Um, people can just continue to come in as we go. My name is Anne-Claire Collet. I work for the Office of Energy and Climate Change. I'm part of the team that's delivering um, the two funds. I'm joined today by Justin Cook, the Director of Low Carbon and Clean Technology Industries. Um, we also have with us Nev Bra, the Manager of Low Carbon and Clean Manufacturing. And in the background, we have our colleague Rebecca Elchin, who did the hard yards in organizing this session and who's driving the presentation. Um, in this webinar, we'll be talking about the registration of interest that is currently open for two new funding initiatives. Um, we have the Renewable Manufacturing Fund and the Low Carbon Product Manufacturing Fund. I have to come out of this. Next slide, please, Becky. Before we get into the presentations, um, I would like to acknowledge the First Nations people and recognize their continuous connection to country, culture and community. Um, today, I'm working on the land of the Baramadical people, uh, which is part of the Derek Nation. Um, Baramada was what is now known um, as Baramana, and it loosely translates as the place where the eels uh, lie down. Uh, it might sound familiar with the Paramedical eels. Um, I would like to pay my respect to the Paramedical people um, as the custodians of this beautiful land, um, their elders past, present and emerging. And I would always also like to acknowledge any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander people here with us in this meeting today. Next slide, please. A little bit of housekeeping. Um, we have the cameras turned off for this event. Um, I might get a bit overwhelmed by seeing all your lovely faces. Uh, the same goes for the microphones, as there's so many people in this uh, meeting, it might get a little messy. I do get a little bit of background noise. I'm not sure what is causing that. Um, any questions you might have during or after the event, you can send to our mailbox. Uh, the address is here on the slide. Um, I would like to take this opportunity as well to thank everybody who's already submitted questions. That has helped us greatly in uh, preparing this event. Um, following the webinar, we will be publishing uh, frequently asked questions um, on our website. Uh, it's likely not tomorrow because it takes a little bit of time, but hopefully they'll be up next week and we'll continue to update them as required. Um, finally, <laughs> Nessa, would you be able to please mute your microphone? Thank you. Um, the webinar is also being recorded and a recording will be added to the website too. Thank you. Next slide, please. So what can you expect from today's um, session? Uh, firstly, I will hand the mic to Justin Cook, um, who will give a brief overview of the Renewable Manufacturing Fund and the Low Carbon Product Manufacturing Fund. It's quite a mouthful. Um, he will talk a little bit to their background, the objectives, and, and what is the opportunity here. Um, he will be handing over to Nev Bra, who will explain the registration of interest in further detail. Uh, the third part of this session is dedicated to uh, pre-prepared Q&As. Um, that session is based on the questions we received as part of the registration for this event. And we've selected the questions that are relevant to the audience. After the Q&A, we will wrap up and conclude the session. Um, we don't expect to take up the full hour, so hopefully we'll be able to give you back some time in your day. Like I mentioned earlier, 
Uh, if you do have questions during or after this uh, webinar, please submit them via the mailbox. Um, the questions will either be uh, addressed directly if it's project related or if it's re relevant for everyone, it will be added to the FAQs. Next slide, please. So Justin, I would like to give the floor to you now to tell us more about these two new funding initiatives. Thank you. Thanks very much, Anna Claire, and uh, thank you to everyone who has joined us uh, for today's session. Uh, it's it's fantastic to see the level of interest uh, in this um, in this ROI process and and in the funds themselves. Uh, so thank you very much, um, Becky. If you could go to the next slide, please. I just wanted to provide everyone with a bit of context for the uh, Renewable Manufacturing Fund and the Low Carbon Product Manufacturing Fund. And as Anna Claire said, they're a bit of a mouthful. I won't try and say both of those very quickly uh, together. But just, just for a, a bit of context for, for everyone uh, so that you can understand how this is, is sitting um, with, with the rest of our policy and programs. In New South Wales, uh, we uh, have adopted a, a target uh, of achieving uh, net zero emissions by 2050. We've also set uh, an interim target. So by 2030, uh, our target is to reduce our emissions by 50%. And that was further updated uh, at the end of last year uh, to be 70% by 2035. So these are ambitious targets uh, and, and they're, they're targets that, uh, that many jurisdictions around the world uh, are now uh, adopting as well. Underpinning those targets uh, is our net zero plan. Uh, and the first stage of that uh, covers the, 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 the decade to 2030. There are a range of uh, policies and programs that are feeding into the net zero plan. One of those uh, is the, the net zero industry and innovation program. That's uh, a more than $1 billion program uh, that, that covers the, the next 10 years that is looking to support the decarbonisation of uh, uh, businesses and industry in New South Wales, helping businesses and industry to transition to a low carbon future and to take the opportunities that we know uh, that that, that um, represents uh, for the uh, economy and communities of New South Wales. So within the NZIP, uh, as we like to call it, or the Net Zero Industry and Innovation Program, uh, you can see the, the range of uh, uh, funding opportunities that, um, that we're progressively rolling out. Each of these are targeting uh, specific uh, areas of, um, uh, of activity and of innovation, uh, right from research and development through to deployment. Uh, and we're looking to to form um, some lasting partnerships with New South Wales industry to be able to deliver these. And as you can see from uh, this uh, from this table here, uh, the Renewable Manufacturing Fund and the Low Carbon Product Manufacturing Fund are targeting projects at that deployment phase. I'll speak a bit more about that in a moment. If we can move to the next slide, please. The other important piece of, uh, of context for everyone is uh, the, the New South Wales government's uh, electricity infrastructure roadmap. This is um, a, a really significant piece of, uh, of our policy uh, puzzle uh, to, to get us to, to net zero um, by 2050. Uh, it's, it's essentially setting out how we're going to coordinate the investment in transmission, generation, uh, storage, and firming infra infrastructure that will um, uh, that will replace the uh, the current power stations that we have uh, that are relying on uh, on fossil fuels and shifting to uh, uh, renewable uh, energy sources. And a big part of that is the build out of our renewable energy zones uh, throughout New South Wales. Uh, these will these will be the uh, the areas that um, will generate the renewable uh, energy. Uh, that will uh, feed into our grid and help to de decarbonise uh, 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 New South Wales industry and, and our economy uh, into the future. That is a significant task and, and that's something that, um, that we've we certainly recognised, um, least of which is um, ensuring that we've got the, 
uh, the the capacity um, uh, uh, within our local supply chains to be able to feed into um, the enormous demand that we have um, that we forecast for for the components uh, that are required to to build out uh, the infrastructure for the renewable energy zones. And again, this is where the renewable manufacturing fund uh, we see is going to play a, a big part. If we can move to the next slide, please. Uh, so he, here's some further information about uh, the two funds that we're uh, putting together and that are the subjects of the registration of interest process uh, that, that um, you've all expressed uh, interest in. Uh, so the low carbon product manufacturing fund and the renewable manufacturing fund side by side here um, the low carbon product manufacturing fund uh, is is over the next 10 years and will be um, the, the total program funding for that is uh, 300 million dollars uh, that that will be supporting uh, new industrial uh, activities that will help to manufacture uh, new low carbon materials or, or products um, really focusing on on those technologies that um, have a, a, a potential to help um, transform uh, and create new industries here in New South Wales. Um, the Renewable Manufacturing Fund, um, as I referred to in, in the last slide, that's over a, a shorter time frame, so out to 2027, um, and a total um, program fund uh, funding pool of, of $250 million. Um, but that's supporting uh, the, the, the scale manufacturing of, of the plant, the equipment and the processes uh, that we need to be able to produce that renewable energy infrastructure. Um, but also uh, things like um, uh, uh, supporting equipment for uh, electric vehicles, uh, transmission uh, for, um, for uh, renewable energy as well. Now, this information uh, I think we've also made available in the ROI documentation. Uh, so if you um, haven't yet uh, reviewed that, then I, I'd suggest that you have a look at that. Um, that contains this information as well. If we move to the next slide, thanks, Becky. So uh, the the registration of interest uh, process itself uh, is um, uh, is is uh, as Nav will, will explain uh, in his section, uh, helping us to um, uh, find out what what you uh, and the market uh, are looking at in terms of your plans for the future uh, for these types of activities. Uh, and we, we want to um, hopefully through this process um, find out more about um, what, what your investment plans might be and, and how we might be able to best structure our funds uh, to support uh, projects that um, are aligned to the objectives uh, of these two funds. We've um, we've provided some information about the I think the high level domains or categories of uh, technologies and activities that we think um, we would uh, be supporting through these these two funds, um, which you can see up on the screen um, here. Um, the, the low carbon product manufacturing fund. Um, so looking at power fuels and clean fuels, um, agricultural products and feed, uh, green chemicals, um, equipment um, or, or infrastructure for hydrogen uh, end users, uh, low emissions building materials, um, even sharing um, uh, or so industrial um, byproducts. Um, uh, so sharing of, of those byproducts through um, some sort of circular economy uh, arrangement. Now, the, this is not an exhaustive list necessarily, but these are the domains that our initial market analysis has identified um, would uh, would have potential for for growth and scale in New South Wales. But again, um, we're looking to to you through this ROI process to give us some more information about um, what might be what might be out there. Uh, and then looking at the Ren renewable manufacturing fund, um, we're looking at um, supporting projects uh, that um, would be producing or manufacturing renewable uh, energy components, so at utility scale, um, uh, electric vehicle components, um, but, but that's excluding 
uh, government buses, so that's quite explicit there. Um, the electrification equipment to support the switching from fossil fuels to electricity, which um, can be quite broad, um, and also the, the manufacture or production of hydrogen electrolyzers. Um, again, these are the, 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 the domains or the categories that we've initially identified, um, but we are really looking forward to um, hearing your feedback uh, about what, um, what potential there is for uh, particular projects here in New South Wales. So I might leave it there and I'm going to throw to my colleague Nav, who's going to tell you a bit more about the ROI process. Thanks very much, um, Justin, and um, welcome to our, I think it's about 315 plus um, delegates. So welcome everybody. Uh, I'm Nav Bra. I'm the um, manager for the low carbon and clean manufacturing team. And it's the team that's been tasked with designing and delivering uh, these two funding uh, initiatives. And what I'd like to take you through uh, briefly is to provide you with an overview of the uh, registration of interest uh, process, which I, which I really hope that um, most of you, if not all of you, will be, uh, will be participating in. Uh, next slide, please. So why? Why participate in this um, registration of interest? Um, really, there are three key uh, opportunities uh, for industry uh, by participating in this registration of interest. Firstly, we would really welcome uh, industry's uh, input uh, to tell us about how we can establish and expand these new um, supply chains, new manufacturing supply chains in New South Wales. And very importantly, we also want to get your input uh, to help us shape and and fine tune the design of, of these two funds so that it's really fit for purpose and resonates with uh, with your needs as and indeed is aligned with your needs. Um, the registration of interest process is also uh, a bit of a market sounding exercise uh, for us and it's an opportunity for you to showcase and tell us about some of these opportunities that um, that you're working on and projects you're working on which are worthy which may be worthy of uh, government support. Um, We'd like you to tell us about your manufacturing pipeline, so it gives us an uh, an idea of um, what sort of future support might be needed to support these new industries. And also very importantly, uh, through this registration of interest process, it will also be used to uh, prioritize certain projects um, so that they can be progressed uh, rapidly to a, a full application. Now there'll be some criteria for for the, uh, you know for prioritizing uh, projects uh, to a detailed uh, application process, and that will be that the projects uh, have to be uh, investment ready. Uh, those projects have to be uh, time sensitive, and they have to be strategically aligned to um, some of the objectives uh, and policy objectives that. Um, Justin touched on earlier. So what do we mean by uh, investment ready projects? Um, so the investment ready projects would be projects that have clearly defined aims and objectives. Um, they have clearly defined uh, production outputs. Um, you've got a program and time schedule uh, for delivering uh, your project. You've got a delivery team which has sufficient capacity and partners with sufficient, sufficient capacity to help you realize your project. Um, you're manufacturing uh, and you're involved in a technology that is actually uh, commercialized. Um, you've got a feasibility assessments already done and you've got a pretty robust business case. So that's what those are the kind of things that we'll be looking at to to check if your uh, proposals are investment ready. And what do we mean by time sensitive? Well, it could be where you are seeking government support uh, to secure investment uh, or to potentially attract co-financing from another party or indeed to to be able to deliver your project because you've got some sort of time constraint um, you know you could be bidding for uh, for a particular opportunity or a particular contract and there might be a certain time constraint associated with that for example um, and finally um, what do we mean by a projects being strategically significant uh, for the purposes of this ROI your project has to be aligned to at least one of the uh, funds um, objectives um, that Justin touched on earlier and um, it has to either alleviate some critical uh, supply chain risks uh, for New South Wales and or, or have uh, a, a, some sort of uniqueness or unique benefit that it provides um, relative to other comparable uh, businesses. Next slide, please. 
So to participate um, uh, in this ROI, uh, please uh, head over to our website, and um, there's a link there that will uh, that will direct you to the um, to the registration of interest process. Um, really important, this registration of interest process uh, is going to be managed using a Smarty Grants uh, platform. It's a third party flat platform that's uh, quite widely widely used, and we really encourage. Uh, everyone who's going to be uh, participating in the registration of interest to please familiarize yourselves uh, with the Smarty Grants guideline, which is also accessible uh, through the through Smarty Grants in the website. And particularly if you've never used it before, I think that's 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 really important. Um, and also very importantly, the registrations of interest must be submitted via the Smarty Grants uh, platform and not not in any other uh, in any other way. Um, so the uh, few few important notes um, to ensure that your submissions uh, go through smoothly um, with Smarty Grants. Uh, before you hit the submit button, please make sure that your registration uh, and all the all the information in your registration um, uh, forms uh, is is complete. Um, because uh, once you hit submit in Smarty Grants, there isn't an opportunity to go back and revise uh, the information. Um, you can do it, but what you have to do it do, provided just before the deadline, um, is to contact contact us, uh, and then we'll have to enable you to get back in to make any changes or adjustments uh, that you make. So uh, the preference obviously is to make sure it's fully complete before you actually hit the submit button. Um, and um, the other piece of advice based on uh, previous programs that we that we've run is um, please Try not to leave your submission uh, uh, to the last moment or any questions or queries you have to the last moment. Um, approach us uh, as early on in the process as you can so that we can uh, fully service your, your queries and address your, your questions properly. Um, and if a lot of companies leave it to the very last moment uh, and there's, there's a rush in the final days or the final hours, often um, we may not be able to uh, garner sufficient resources to respond to in a timely way. So please, um, um, Submit your queries and questions early, uh, and we're here to serve you. Uh, uh, now, the other important point regarding uh, Smarty Grants is if you've got a uh, if you've got a range of projects that are that are quite discrete, then um, such multiple projects must be entered as separate submissions. Um, that's just the way Smarty Grants is configured. Um, so, if you've got multiple projects, uh, then please. Uh, enter them as separate separate submissions so they can be considered properly. In terms of next steps, um, the registration of interest process uh, closes at, at the end of the month uh, by fe February the 28th. Um, thereafter, through March, uh, our team uh, and our specialists will be reviewing your submissions um, uh, in detail to to understand what the scope is, you know, whether you're investment ready, what your support needs are, you know, what sort of um, how would you like the, the funds uh, shaped so that it's um, the funds fit for purpose for industry? So, you know, we'll spend March going through uh, through submissions. We may, um, you know, from March through 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 possibly uh, into um, early April, you, you can expect to hear from us uh, about your submissions. Um, we may reach out with further questions or request to set up a meeting um, uh, if required, and that will happen through March and uh, and uh, in, into April. Now, depending on the uh, assessment outcome or, or review outcome of the ROI submissions, um, if th there are projects that are you know investment ready, time critical, and meet some st strategic objectives, then um, potentially we may um, invite those projects to then proceed to a a, a, f a full application. Um, Soon after the the program, uh, the, the the final program is um, is launched, um, and that's about the most of the information I think I need to share with you at this point in time. I really do look forward to um, uh, to your participation in this. Uh, over to you, uh, Anna Claire, for the questions and answers. Thank you, Nav. Um, yeah, moving on to the third part of this session, the uh, Q and A. Just to uh, reiterate, we received a large number of questions um, as part of the registration for this event. 
So we've uh, pre-prepared questions uh, based on those. Uh, we will only be the, uh, covering the ones that are relevant to the whole audience, and we might have grouped some of the questions. Um, as it says on the slide, if you do have further questions, uh, please email them to us via the mailbox and um, look out for those uh, FAQs on our website, which will be updated as required. Um, so I'll move on to the first question. Um, this one's for you, uh, Nev. So people who didn't participate in the ROI, um, would they still be able to participate in the funding opportunity? Um, yes, so for organizations that haven't submitted an ROI, there's still an opportunity to participate in the fund when the fund uh, formally uh, is opened. It doesn't uh, it doesn't prevent you from uh, from seeking funding once the fund fund opens. Um, uh, there will likely be uh, a number of funding streams uh, that we'll be designing that will be available to uh, to meet industry needs. Um, and these will be informed by some of the information that you're going to be providing us, hopefully in the in the ROI and helping us shape the design of the um, of the funds. Thank you. Uh, second question for you as well. Um, so what happens if a project is considered investment ready time? sensitive and strategically significant. OK, um, we would like to give uh, those projects which are investment ready, uh, strategically significant and um, and, and time critical um, uh, priority consideration uh, to progress them to a, a, a full uh, application uh, to a full application. Um, the panel will review your submission against those three criteria, investment readiness, uh, time criticality, and strategic significance, as I uh, discussed before. Uh, if your project uh, proposal uh, meets those criteria, uh, you may be invited to submit uh, a, a full application uh, process, uh, submit a full application. Um, our team will notify you once the program is launched and once the funds are open, um, and you'll be invited for a pre-submission meeting to further discuss your further discuss your project. All right, thanks. It's very clear. Next question is sort of uh, related. Um, so what happens if I were to participate in the ROI, uh, but I'm not invited to submit a digital application? OK. So for those uh, participants um, uh, who've participated uh, in the ROI and haven't been invited straight away to submit a, 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 a detailed application, there are other opportunities once the, once the fund uh, opens. Um, all, all participants will receive advice from our team on their submission. Um, every submission will be uh, will be responded to. Um, these will the kind of feedback and 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 advice that you'll receive from us will cover alignment of your project uh, proposal with the objectives of the two funds um, and how you could participate uh, uh, in the funds once the funds uh, are open for application. Uh, participants um, that are not invited for a detailed application uh, at this stage will still be able to apply for funding when the funding initiatives are formally opened, uh, as I'd indicated previously. Uh, you, they will go through the same process uh, as any other proponent uh, applying um, applying for the uh, for the funds, whether or not they participated in the ROI. Um, uh, this we're at this stage uh, we're anticipating, uh, as is quite common with, with uh, gov similar government grants, that this funding initiative uh, will most likely involve a two stage process which will be an expression of interest followed by uh, a, a detailed application. Um, we really do strongly encourage uh, each applicant to have a readiness check meeting with us, uh, with a representative from our office ahead of any application stage uh, once the funds are formally opened. All right, thank you. Um, the next uh, two questions uh, were already covered by you, Nev, in your presentation, but but I might just quickly touch on them in case anybody missed it. Um, so the, there was one question around being able to submit multiple projects for the ROI. 
Um, that is a, a yes, you are able to submit multiple projects, uh, but they can't be bundled into one submission. Um, so you would need to submit a separate uh, registration of interest for each project. Um, you will be able to use the same general information across all those submissions. Um, just the project details would need to be specific. And if you require assistance there, please um, email the team via the mailbox. Um, the next one you, you also touched on, Nav, in your presentation. Um, if you've already submitted your ROI, uh, but you want to make changes, uh, perhaps based on what, you he what you're hearing today, um, this is possible, but you'd need to contact us as an administrator of the fund and the registration of interest. Um, what you do is you send an email to the mailbox with a request to reopen your submission form. This needs to be done before uh, the 28th of February when the registration of interest closes. We can't make any changes to submissions after that date. Um, in relation to submitting um, your form, everybody that does a final submission will receive an automated email. Um, so if you didn't get that confirmation, it's likely, and you didn't get it in your spam box as well, it's likely that you didn't actually submit. So please go to Smarty Brands to double check, and otherwise you can uh, email the team for assistance. There's also a really useful uh, help guide for applicants that you can uh, download via the Smarty Grants platform. Righty, then the next um, couple of questions are uh, more um, fund related, uh, less registration of interest. Um, so, um, oh no, no, we've got one more registration of interest uh, question for you, Nev. Um, so in the form, we have quite a few sort of general and technical project questions but it also contains questions about the type of support that is needed um, both financial and non-financial support um nev could you talk a little bit more about the objectives of those sure. questions sure Anna Clay. um the the questions that are around the financial su support are, are really designed to help us finalize the funding streams that we'll be we'll be offering um the size of the grants and the allocation of the budget how we organize the allocation of the budget so that's that's the purpose of that um you know we're fully aware that not every project requires uh financial support necessarily. There, there are many other forms of support that government can assist industry with. You know, your project uh, might not, for example, might not yet be uh, investment um, investment ready, you know, and you may require support with um, preparing, completing feasibility studies or completing uh, business cases and business plans. Um, so we can, you know, we're looking to provide those kind of uh, support, uh, that kind of support as well to, to industry to help them progress their initiatives. Um, you might, for example, be looking at a suitable location uh, for your project. Um, you know, so we could we could assist you. Uh, we could also uh, potentially link you with some other government funding programs through our through our network. Um, and Justin touched on some other um, NZ programs, uh, net zero industry innovation programs that that might, may may be better suited to you. So we can sort of refer you through um, to consider those pro those programs. Um, if you go to the, uh, once you go into the registration of interest form, uh, you will notice that most most of the questions in there uh, do have hints um, that will help you prepare your response. We've designed the registration of interest form, uh, we think to be really, really efficient and not consume too many of your resources. Um, but uh, in the hint, we've listed the types of assistance you might consider uh, requesting. Uh, however, that list is not exhaustive, so please, um, we look forward to you letting us know what other sort of non-financial assistance you may need, and um, we'll try to weave um, suitable types of support into the program. Thank you, uh, Nev. Um, so we're moving on to a couple of questions uh, which are more fund um, related. Um, I'll hand these to you, Justin. Um, so in the last sort of uh, two months, we've received a lot of questions around eligibility of uh, specific projects, um, the scope of the funds, the size of the grants. Um, Justin, would you be able to talk a little bit 
to these topics? Thanks, Santa Claire. Uh, yes, and look, I, I'm, I'm um, aware that everyone is is intensely interested in in the um, you know the precise um, eligibility criteria uh, and some of the other uh, details that um, that we will uh, be releasing once the fund is is open. Uh, I'd probably say at the outset that that, that at this point in time. Um, I would I would probably encourage people to um, to review the documentation uh, that we've released as part of the ROI for the, um, the the broad eligibility criteria that we've we've currently published uh, as as a guide for uh, the types of uh, projects uh, and the types of um, uh, businesses and and groups that we might be looking to support. As I mentioned earlier, the one of the the, the points of this um, ROI process is to uh, is to hear from you uh, about what um, what types of projects might be out there, um, who might be uh, uh, looking to put forward particular projects, and who might be um, looking to work together. We want to use that information to help us to refine the uh, the criteria that we um, that we go out with once the funds are open. So it is really important that we uh, that we hear from you. Uh, about what what types of projects are out there and who uh, and and what type of businesses uh, are looking to engage uh, to help inform uh, at the our our pro program design. Uh, I, I'm also really aware that people don't want to waste their time and money uh, engaging in a process that um, may not be uh, fit for them. So as Nav uh, said earlier, we'll be making ourselves available to speak to proponents once the ROI. Um, has concluded and as we prepare to open uh, the funds for launch uh, to, to talk through um, projects, to talk through uh, how you might um, fit into the eligibility criteria uh, so that um, so that you're uh, prepared to be able to engage in that process. So we're, we're very mindful of that and we want to um, support proponents uh, through through all of those steps. Thank you, Justin. Um... I get the key message loud and clear that really these uh, submissions will help shape these funding initiatives. Um, I'd like to just point out to our audience that on the website there is a link to the review criteria for this registration of interest and in there you will also find some guidance on potential eligibility criteria. So these are net, not yet fully set in stone, but will give you an idea of the types of organizations and the types of projects that will be eligible um, for these initiatives. Um, two uh, slightly more specific questions here. I'm going to um, give those to you, Justin. The first one is, I have a like a if you have a research and development a demonstration or a pilot project that requires support, would they be able to receive funding under these initiatives? Thanks. Thanks, Anna Claire. Yeah, look, uh, um, as as I as I mentioned uh, in, in one of the earlier slides, uh, you know, I think the key focus for the Renewable Manufacturing Fund and the Low Carbon Product Manufacturing Funds are uh, to support uh, projects that are in that deployment phase so that um, they're investment ready um, and they're they're uh, commercially viable um, uh, projects. Um, the uh, we, we do recognise that um, projects are going to be in various states of readiness, um, and um, we also recognise that um, across uh, across the um, uh, you know the suite of of projects that are out there, um, some are in research and development phase, and some are um, uh, nearing that deployment phase. Um, we do have other programs um, either within the Net Zero Industry and Innovation Program, um, as well as other parts of um, of government that can support projects that are still in the R and D phase. Uh, and we'd be happy to work with proponents to help identify what what might be the best fit for for projects um, uh, at that time? Uh, I I would just also point out that um, uh, that you know we we also we also know that um, there might be projects that are nearing um, nearing that deployment uh, phase. But as as Nav was 
referring to before, might need some assistance um, around feasibility or business planning uh, to, to be able to get into that next phase. So that's that's also an area that we're we're looking to um, we're looking to uh, address as well. Thank you, Justin. I noticed that somebody's uh, put their hand up. Unfortunately, um, in this event, we're unable to take uh, live questions as all the microphones in the chat has been turned off. I will kindly ask you to email your question to the mailbox. Um, the address is here on the slide. And yeah, apologies that we're unable to take live questions at this point in time. Thank you. Um, Another question for you, Justin. Um, so within these funding opportunities, will there be priority given to projects in regional New South Wales? Um, yeah, look, it's a, it's a really good question. And I think um, there's, you know, there's we know that there's a lot of great activity that's happening in, uh, in regional New South Wales, um, a lot of great innovation, uh, a lot of great projects coming through and some fantastic industry um putting their, their shoulder to the wheel um I, I think what what we're what what we want to be able to see is that projects are um are, are aligned uh to some of the um the strategic the, the the strategies that um that new south wales has, has put in place um when it comes to particular precincts um so we've got special activation precincts um uh, we've got um, also our obviously our renewable energy zones that I referred to um, earlier, uh, and I think if if projects can demonstrate that there is a, um, a strategic alignment to to those um, uh, to those, then I think that that's something that we would like to see, um, and also to to see how there might be um, strength in partnerships. Uh, in particular geographic um, locations that that will help a project uh, to um, to stand up uh, and, and I think very importantly you know how we can um, how we can build some of the um, resilience into our supply chains which is one of the objectives um, particularly of the low carbon product manufacturing fund um, but also of the renewable manufacturing fund uh, and um, you know, the, the location of a project may indeed um, talk to that. So we'd, we'd very much like to see um, uh, in your uh, ROI responses, how your project uh, is going to align with, um, uh, with what might be happening in particular parts of New South Wales. Uh, thank you, uh, Justin. I'd like to just add to that, that um, of course, projects in other locations in New South Wales will, will still be eligible and will also be carefully considered. So if you're not regionally based or linked to any of these uh, zones, it doesn't mean you, you won't be considered. Um, so I've got a final question here as part of this uh, Q&A. Um, I'll, I'll hand this one to you as well, Justin. Uh, what happens if there's a change in government? Thanks, thanks, Anna Claire. Look, um, we're obviously not able to to make any sort of comment on on um, you know particular um, uh, policies or or, or, or um, proposed actions um, that that might arise from from that. Um, I would I would say that we will we will be um, keeping all of um, all of the, uh, the stakeholders and um, proponents that we've been dealing with through the ROI and through. Um, our market engagement on this um, abreast of any material changes or um, updates. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we will certainly obviously keep our lines of communication open with everyone. Thank you. Thanks both for um, this Q&A session. Um, I guess that uh, concludes the third uh, part of this session and brings us uh, basically to the end of the webinar. Um, just like to give a reminder that the registration of interest um, closes on Tuesday, the 28th of February at 5 uh, p.m. Um, please keep an eye out for the um, FAQs on our website and um, today's recording. Um, like we've mentioned several times during our presentations, if you still have questions uh, after this session, uh, please send us an email. Um, the address of our mailbox is on this slide. 
Uh, we also encourage you to visit our website, uh, review the ROI materials, and there's also the opportunity there for you to uh, register uh, to receive email updates on all Net Zero programs, and that includes uh, the ROI and the two initiatives uh, covered today. Um, also, if you require Smarty Grants uh, assistance or just assistance with your ROI in general, uh, please reach out to us. Uh, we're here to help. Um, yeah, I guess uh, this is it. Um, I would like to thank you all for your interest and thank you all for attending this um, session. We really look forward to your submissions and uh, we hope to um, build a great uh, program from them. Uh, wishing you all a um, lovely afternoon and um, hope to speak again soon. Thank you.